what I'm going to do now real quick is I'm going to show you some of the – I may do some of the pressure stuff tonight too if I have time. All right, this is an example, and Joe, you'll love this. This is mesh. I'm sure you'll 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 drool over this. Now, I probably drew it wrong because I'm not an air raid guy, but, you know, this is the best way I can draw it. So in a situation like this, we're counting him as the quick cross, the one that comes across your face. Now, I don't know. Air raid guys may run it different. The, the quick cross may be from the boundary. I don't know. But what, what happened in this situation is he just get an in call right now, and the mic would have to put his hands and play that. Okay? What the jack is going to do is make him, like you heard me say earlier, run the hump. So he's going to get here. He's pressing him vertical. He's going to bust him in the chest. And he's going to make him run this hump. Now, when he runs this hump, here's what happens. Number one, he's running it almost right to the free safety's lap. Okay, the free safety aligns at about 10 to 12, typically for us. Now, I had a kid this past year. He's graduating. This joker would line up at like 14 or 15 sometimes, and I'd be yelling at him from the sideline. Get a little closer, get a little closer. But, hey, kid caught four picks this year, so maybe he knew something I didn't. But what the rover would do, we don't run down into the backfield, okay? All we do is just don't let him get outside of our shoulder. That's it. We don't go running down there to him. This is not man coverage. So when this happens, he's going to continue to sink. And when one goes in, our rules are your eyes go inside. Remember, match, carry, deliver. You deliver that to the mic. In, 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 and your eyes are over there because we're thinking something goes in, comes something's coming across, all right? And if we know we're getting cleared out over here, something's coming. So what we're doing is we're working the timing of this. We want the mesh to run right into the coverage, and we want to force the quarterback to throw it perfectly. We want him to throw it immediately right over top of the Mike's head, and one of two things is going to happen. If it's a great throw, the kid might catch it, and our free safety should send him to ER. Boom. Okay, right now. If the throw is high, our free safety can make a play on the ball. If the throw is late, okay, and he throws it over here, our rover should be to make a play on the ball. Okay? If the throw is too early, the jack might make a play or it'll be incomplete. The point is we want to make this ball be perfect. That's what we're trying to do. We know that everything is not going to be an incomplete pass. We just want, okay, your route's got to be good, your mesh in this situation's got to be good, and your throw's got to be good. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to trick that up any way we can. Can we trick it up with the timing? Can we get hands on this receiver right here? Can we trick it up with the pressure? We beat a one-on-one -on -one right here, okay? Can we trick it up with you know all five are coming, so you change your play and you don't send this tail back out. So now my rover can do what? He can sink right here and get greedy because there's nothing threatening in this perimeter, all right? We're, we're trying to figure out how we can distort or cause the play an issue because the difference between defense and offense, and if an offensive guy is watching this video, the difference in defense is offense. You need multiple guys to execute to succeed, whereas I only need one of your guys to make a mistake to succeed. You, you need an offensive line to execute, a quarterback to execute, and a receiver to execute. If one of these five guys make a mistake, I got you. If this kid right here makes a bad throw, I got you. If this kid right here makes, or this kid runs a bad route, I got you. You need multiple kids to execute. I only need one kid to make a mistake. So defensively, a lot of times you're playing percentages. That's what you're doing. And you're saying, you know what? If we're where we're supposed to be every single time and you make a perfect throw, cool. But can you do it again? We call that uh, the terrorist versus homeland defense. O only one terrorist <laughs> has to be right. Right, only one. Uh, right, only one, and, and that's what it is. Oh, look, you you know, if an offensive lineman messes up, if a receiver messes up, or whatever, I, I'm smiling on the other sideline. Like, I got you. You know, that's all it takes. Um, matter of fact, I'm gonna show you guys a quick film real quick. This is a team that they didn't really execute this perfectly. Joe, you probably will be like, you know, we run that better where we're at. Um, but this is a team right here that ran um, over under a mesh on us. And we were able to, um, I believe this is it right here. This might not be it. I might have to go down. Hold on. Matter of fact, I'm just going to go to the game itself. It'd be easier to do that. It'll be a whole lot easier for me to go to the game itself. Because it was the it was their first third down call. 
they completed it, but not for a lot of yards. Does that make it easier to see for them, Joe? Yeah, that's good right there. Okay. Now, you air raid guys, I know you do this. They stacked it. So I kind of knew right then, okay, we getting ready to get some some crossing routes right here. Now, one thing you see here is the Jack Backer apexed out. That is a call that we make. Um, that is not a base call. We call that hawk is what we call that. Um, we do that to certain personnel groups or certain formations, um, especially on third down. All it really does is give him the ability to get closer to where he needs to be. Um, typically, when we do it, we go too high. In, a situ in this situation, we didn't because they were stacked. That was our game plan. So if you watch, our distribution here isn't perfect because one of the things that happens is our mic gets caught up in the tailback. Big number one, he's an all-region playing for us. He gets caught up in the tailback, so he gives up some space behind him. But you see the jack get hands on, and the ball is actually going to go underneath. They had a play over the top because our mic didn't stay in his hook. He ran on the back. See, I'm not one of them coaches who only shows y'all perfect film. I show you the mistakes, and I show you what we do right. They have a play behind this referee because the mic went too far over. But sometimes defense, we can use that referee as another defender, especially the old ones that don't want to move out of the way. So they catch it, but what do we do? We tackle it immediately. And that's what I want you guys to see, what you heard me talk about earlier. There are going to be times when they execute and they throw the ball. Tony, try it, on, try it on slow. All right, hold on. Man. I'm going to wind it back. All right, hold on. All right, you see the mic. He gets too far out wide. He sees the back. So right now they have something. But we're going to make the tackle. And that's all that matters. This right here is a third and, I believe, a third and 10, third and 12. We take this. Boom. And we're off the field. You see number six. He is actually the free safety. You see pre-snap. He is not 12 yards. That's five. That's 10. He's about right in here off the screen at about 15. I told you he liked to play deep. We actually run a stunt here. I think they were trying to cut our guy and failed, so they got two in the quarterback's face. This kid stood in there and threw it, though. Easy tackle. Not hard. And that's what this system is designed to do. When we are playing teams that, you know, we can't match up with man-to-man -man, or maybe they want to hit us with – I'm going to show you guys one that's tough to defend. Maybe they want to rub us and we know that. Then we'll check to this and we'll run a three-deep, three-under scheme just to keep them honest so they just can't run, you know, man beaters all night long and stack and rub and do all that stuff. Now, this one here is the, really the toughest one we defend. Slant shoot is hard, but this is the toughest one for us because, and this is why we have the Hulk call, we'll apex our kid from time to time, is because this right here forces our mic to get all the way out on three, which is impossible for him to do to the field. Um, it's impossible. He can make the tackle every now and then, but he's not going to be able to stop this route. Our rule is on this is the rover plays the deep route. So once he pushes past linebacker depth, he's going to open up, he's going to take it. What we're trying to do is we're going to defend the first down and the touchdown. We're going to stop this and make you throw the check down. When you do, we'll rally up the rover and the mic and we'll make the play. So obviously, trips rule, backside corners megged up, the jack would come sit in the hole because our rule is we're going to expand the zone. So if everything breaks out and the mic is out, we're going to expand the zone, okay? Now, obviously, if he runs a crossing route, the mic can pass him off with the jack like you saw before, but we're going to expand the zone. Flood and slant shoot are the toughest things for us to defend. Um, One of the looks that we get in, I don't know if I have it up here because I have been cleaning a lot of stuff up here. Matter of fact, I can show you the Hulk design. All right, this would be if we're facing trips. We would make a Hulk call. We would just apex the jack, and we would rock back to a two-high look. We're still in the five-man front. Georgia made this famous about two years ago. I believe they call it mint or penny, something like that. 
these two guys were stand up edge rushers and they had a nickel or a dime backer or whatever right here. Um, and they got pretty exotic with their pressure out of this. Um, Buddy Ryan calls this 46 nickel. Um, the only difference is he didn't do it from too high and I do. So what we do is all of our rules stay the same. So he's a seam flat player when he's over here. He's a seam flat player right now. He just moved out. That's it. Mike is a middle hook player. He's still a middle hook player. Okay. The Rover, as you know, was the original seam flat player out here. He takes his same job and does it from this position. So what we're actually able to do is we're able to spin into the same seven-man box that we were in when we were in our base. We just show six and rotate the Rover down into the hole. Okay, now our rule in this, it's not like Saban's Ripple is. I mean, it's kind of similar, but our rules are simple. Rule number one, we spin away from the jack. Unless there's a blitz. If there's a blitz, we spin to the blitz. So if the jack was blitzing off the edge, the free safety would spin down, the rover would spin back. It's that simple. If the mic blitzes, we're already spinning in the box nothing changes um we also have a play that we run i think i have this one i can show you guys yep right here this is where we get into our three deep two under stuff um brett venables calls this hot coverage i just give it the same call i just call the blitz to it instead of spinning him down pre post snap we spin him down a little bit pre snap and we just come off the edge we still play the middle hook. He still plays the seam flat. He's still a middle third player. And, of course, we lock the backside corner. Um, when you were asking earlier, Coach, about the fit, situations like this is when we spill our edge guys. So if he knows he has a rusher coming off the edge, whether it's the rover, the jack, whatever it may be, it could be a corner. If he knows that, we make an Air Force call, and that tells him that a secondary player has the force. So when he comes up, he'll say, Air Force, Air Force, inside, inside, and he'll let him know, hey, you're going to spill the ball here. All right. Now, there are other things that we can do. We can call stunts from this. We can come up, and he can actually run a TE stunt inside to A-gap if he wants. Okay. But just in our base scheme, if we just call Shark and he's coming down, the rover will let him know. He'll come up here. And then if we get a down block, he's going to spill it right to the rover's arms. If it's pass protection, he's going to bull rush via the neck the tackle because what we want to do is prevent the tackle from kick sliding out on our outside rusher. So when he comes up like that, if we get a pass set, this edge player is going to go right through his chin strap and just not allow him to kick out on this outside rush. And what we want is to get our athlete coming off the edge hot in the quarterback's face. Um, if we call sting, which is the opposite side of shark, it's the same way The Jack will come down. We'll spin down to it and we'll rock the rover back in the middle of the field. And that is the basis of our three deep two under concept. Uh, we will blitz the mic as well, um, which is pretty tough when we do that because you're getting that six man right through the A gap normally. Sometimes we'll do B gap as well. But when we do that, the rover is coming right down into this hole. So when you try to throw that quick RPO or whatever it may be right there, that rover's key in three and he's coming right down into that hole right now. Um, simple calls for us, but it does give us multiple cards to play at the table, so to speak, because we have three different guys that could be coming and giving us a six rusher in this scheme. And like I said, we're still playing our three deep zone behind it. Matter of fact, I might be able to show you guys some of it. This would be an example of one of them. So let's say we're in base. We're not in hawk. We're in base. So we're single high. We tell it, we give the jack a call, let him know he's going. Now the jack is the one that makes a direction call. I don't make that. Um, if you guys remember my video from a few years ago, I, I let my kids loose. I don't I don't make I don't signal out 15 different things. That's why I don't coach offense. No. Um, we'll give them a base. They know we're in red, we call it. And I'll just let the Jack know I'm turning you loose. He has the freedom to call what he wants to call in front of him. He tells the nose left or right. Okay. And it, in this situation, because he said left, the nose goes, excuse me, this is actually a right call. When he's here, he'll twist off. 
So we can make this a kind of a run blitz if he goes same side, or we can make this kind of a, a cross dog on the center. We can do it whichever way he wants. Um, by saying left, he's letting him know, hey, we're going left. If he says right, it'll be opposite. Um, but the stuff behind it is the same. So the distribution that you saw earlier to some of these past concepts would be the same. And what we are banking on is by sending six, we're eliminating your back from the route con concept. So if you are sending three verts and trying to send your back to the perimeter real quick, or, you know, if he's, if we're trying to eliminate the back from the route conduct. Cause if you, if you send him out now, you can't block our sixth guy. Um, and somebody's coming clean for your quarterback. Um, and we do get some of that. Um, we get that a lot. Um, I'll show you guys some of that probably in a little while if you want to see it. Um, give you another example of one of the ones that we do. Show you the mic here. This is actually 11 personnel. So let's say we got tight into the boundary and the mic makes a ram call. He's telling the three technique. We're just going to stunt this to the right. And now he's going to hit the C gap excuse me, the big gap full force. So now if you're in some kind of big on big, we're going to turn your shoulder, turn your shoulders, and you're going to give me the big gap wide open. And that tailback's got to step up and meet me. If you're going to full slide this, we're going to force this tackle to step down right now, which is now going to give my force guy a free run off the edge. And the last two seasons, not a single player that started at the force position to me was less than 215 pounds. So you got a kid that's 215, 220. I had one two years ago that was 235, and he's coming off the edge full speed, and your tailback's got to step up and be a man and take that. If he can do that, I'll tip my hat to him, but not many high school tailbacks won't do that. Um, and mind you, we're doing that, and we're not necessarily playing just man coverage. We're playing the same three deep, two under concept. One of the things we don't like to do is play three deep, two under versus doubles because the spacing sometimes out here can give us a problem. If this slot receiver can get across our face fast enough, we might have a hole, we might give up a play. But with it being a tight end, we'll run it because we know the Jack can see him and he can get hands on and that's a matchup we like. So we do do a lot of BTF, blitz the formation stuff because I try to keep it where our matchups are good. Um, this is an example of what I told you guys earlier with three deep behind it, if we come up here, and we want to stunt him. This is the X stunt is what we call it. We're just going to swing him inside. Instead of telling him to spill, we're going to swing him inside, and now you're the force contained guy coming off the edge. And we're playing the same two under, three deep concept behind it. So three deep, two under is really effective versus trips because spacing-wise, as long as you have an apex here and you have a guy to patrol the underneath middle, um, you can pretty much handle most of the route combinations you're going to see. Um, it's not a lot of route combinations are going to hit you with where you're not going to be able to distribute this properly. Um, this is an example of what I told you guys at the beginning of the video. We do have a buzz call sometimes in cover three we'll use. If we buzz, buzz means boundary, and it's always our boundary in. So depending on what we're doing, we may run this, okay? We'll call sting, but then we'll say buzz. So what he's he's not dropping immediately. What he does is just peel on the back is what he does. So it's not a 45 out when the ball snap. It's just an upfield rush. If he sees it, he's going to peel off on it. If he don't because it's coming to block him or it went the other way, then he's just going to continue to rush. But all we're doing really with a buzz is we're putting him on a blitz peel is what we're doing. Um, we're not necessarily 45. This year, this kid for me is going to be 6'3 and 250 pounds. I'm not just going to drop him in coverage for general purposes because it's not going to be his strength anyway. It's just a way for me to defend a quick check down or whatever and make that quarterback hold the ball an extra half second. What you got, Joe? I see your brain spinning. No, I love it. I, I, you're, you're making me a believer, man. You want to show the, uh, the clips you picked out? Yeah, I'm going to show a few of them real quick. Now, this – one of the things I haven't gone over here, because um, I don't have it in here yet, we also work a lot of cloud coverage, guys. Uh, we work a lot of three deep um, cloud coverage, and we do that from the Hawk alignment. I'm actually going to show one of them real quick to you. This young man made a heck of a play. Um, 
I got to get to it. This video, the our camera guy left the sound thing on, so you might hear some of the sound in this. I'm not sure. But I'm going to try to get this real quick. Um, if you guys are on my YouTube channel, you may have seen this play. If you guys follow me on TikTok, you may have seen this play. Um, what I'm going to try to do is set the scene for you, what we're trying to do. This team was a heavy bubble team. They were a heavy bubble screen team. And this kid right here, he was actually all district, um, pretty good receiver. He actually, tragically, he tore his ACL two weeks after playing us. Um, he had a couple of FCS offers, and I think they both got pulled. Um, I think he's going to sign somewhere, but he tore his ACL two weeks after playing us. But pretty good receiver. Um, so basically what you see is we're moving. I'm going to try to stop this real quick. We were switching the coverage to what we call white, which is our cloud coverage. So you see the rover starting to back up. He's going to be responsible for the over top. And you see him moving. He's going to be responsible for the deep middle. All right. Now, sometimes we do this with an apex backer. Sometimes we do it from base. Um, you see his eyes out here looking. We had just switched the call to our cloud coverage. So I'm going to try to slow-mo this for you. Unfortunately for them, the number one and number two receiver, and I know you receiver coaches or you OCs looking at the number one and number two receiver did not give us any kind of a vertical threat. They just one of them act like he was going to block. I'm not sure what the other one's doing. So our cloud corner down here, number four, he triggers immediately. Um, and you see, he makes a heck of a play. Um, yeah, our, our sideline loved it. Um, it, it was it was a heck of a play. Um, the kid was perfectly fine after that play, though. He got up. Um, he took a hard hit on the turf, but uh, um, he got up. But what you'll notice is if you look at the eyeballs. So his eyes, he's drifting. Now, he's not getting out of there as fast as I want him to. But I can't get mad at him because the ball is gone. The ball is gone so quick that none of them really have a chance to get to their spot. It was Like I said, it was a heavy bubble team. So the other thing that's impressive is this young man makes a heck of a tackle. I mean, boom, that's right on the thigh pad, what you want it to be. And he did this a lot for us. Um, did an excellent job playing this cloud concept. I'm going to show you another one, if I can get to it quickly. This is the best quarterback we faced this year. Um, this young man's actually, I believe, going to Liberty. Um, for those of y'all in Virginia familiar with our colleges, this young man is going to Liberty. Um, you heard me mention earlier when Expand we Apex the, yeah, out. Maybe. When we apex out, we will occasionally send the mic, okay, and run the cloud coverage. So what we're going to do here is we're going to – this is Mesh, actually, Joe. So you air, your air raid guys on your channel will love this. This school runs Mesh the best that we see, to be honest with you. Um, So you see there's the Mesh, okay? Now we got the corner route, what looks like a corner route to me coming here. Now I'm going to wind it back. This safety, you see he's going to drop to the middle third. This kid right here is going to work over top. This gives you a better sight view of it because it's actually a downfield throw and it's not a bubble screen. What I love what this kid does, though, is he actually plays this tailback with his body. And we work this, but it's just a coaching point. There's no way to know for sure if you're going to execute it until you see a kid do it. But he's playing the shallow cross with his what? His eyes. So we're able to get the pressure. You see the mics coming through, getting ready to get a chin shot. And this kid just says, let the ball go, and we're able to make a pick on him. What our over-the-top safety. Um, unfortunately, we're not athletic enough to run this thing back. It would have been great if we did. Um, but we definitely got the interception. Now, what I also look at in this situation is if this shallow cross is thrown, let's say like right now, he'll catch that, but he's able to redirect and tackle the ball carrier. If you look at the sticks, we got, a, I believe it was a sack or a penalty, one of the two, the previous play. So they're behind the sticks. So if he catches this and he makes this tackle, that's okay. They're punting the ball. What we want is just guys where? In position to tackle the ball carrier. That's what we want. There's your middle of the field protected. And there's a play on the ball. Um, I cannot tell you guys how often we are literally three deep, three under, 
three deep, two under, and that's what we do. Um, that is literally what we do. And it don't change. Um, it literally does not change. I'm going to show you one here real quick that we actually – um. We didn't execute this right. No, it's this one. We did execute it right. We just didn't get a turnover. This one right here. Now, you see, we're walking up here. We're getting ready to make a sting blitz off the edge. This is a tight end set. This is also mesh. We're going to distribute this here. The tight end is going to take the crosser. You see the free safety right there. We don't get the sack, but we get a good hit on the quarterback here. You see the distribution? We're here. I take that all day. If you got to throw a pass like that against me, and this kid stood in there. He made some plays that night. I like this kid. We're going to see him again this year. This particular school actually won the district title. They beat us that night. Um, they lost in the regional finals. But simple, underneath, over top. The rover takes the over top, breaking right there at the left hand of your screen. And what the free did, you'll see it right there, the free actually played the over the top. Because what you saw me draw up earlier is when they run that, he's going to be running it right to the free safety's lap. So the free takes the over top, and now you're just throwing a one-on-one 50-50 ball down the field. That's all you got. And that's what we want. Probably the most impressive thing, and Joe, you're an offensive coach, the most impressive thing on this film to me was number five coming across and picking up this free rusher. Because he comes across the quarterback's face. You see, he's set up here. He comes across the quarterback's face. They big on big this. And he comes across the quarterback's face and just does just enough to make it where that quarterback has that extra second. Magnavis is a very well-coached team. One of the toughest teams we face. So, Joe, hit me with – um. Any questions or anything? I hope I've gone over the three deep stuff enough. I know the last time I did a video with you, guys wanted to see the zone stuff. For the most part, cloud and cover three are the two zones that we mainly run. We don't run a lot of cover four. Um, we just don't have a need for it, really. Um, plus, we run so much pressure, it's hard to play four deep with a pressure system. Um, but cloud three and three deep, three under is pretty much the main thing of what we play. All right, yeah, so that that's my question is how much – give me a uh, guesstimate – how much cover three, how much cover one are you actually running? Um, it depends on the opponent, but we try to stay as close to 60, 40, 50, 50 as I can um, because they look so similar. So I try to keep it as balanced as possible, just like you call an offense. You want to be balanced, but one night we may run cover one 10 to 15 more percent of the time than we do cover three. And then another night it may be the opposite. I will tell you – on third and long this year, we played a lot of the cloud coverage because we get so much. I mean, I went back and self-scouted our district at the end of the season. They were 67% 10 personnel. So we saw so much trips, especially, you know, third down, third and eight plus, that we ran a lot of the cloud coverage um, from our Hawk alignment, our two high apex backer alignment. We ran a lot of cloud. So to be honest with you, we were probably about, 40% cover one, um, about 40% cloud, and about maybe 20% true cover three. Um, simply because we saw so much trips, and I wanted to show that too high a little bit um, and kind of deter um, certain pre-snap things. Um, so we ran pro we probably ran more cloud than we did true cover three this year, especially in district play. All right, now I'm going to ask you a, a very offensive question. So when you're in summer seven on seven, are you going out there with uh, six guys on defense? Um, I have done it. Um, I don't do it all the time, but I have done it. Um, typically what we do in seven on seven, and I, I've had a lot of guys ask me that. Typically what I do in seven on seven is we play cover three from that two high look um, that you saw. We'll rotate back and forth to it. Uh, remember our rule is we rotate away from the jack. Um, so we know that's our rule. Another thing I do a lot of during seven on seven, this is going to make you very mad is I will play two man all night long. Um, for two reasons. Um, number one, because I play a lot of cover one. So I want my corners to get as many man to man reps as we can. Um, 
Number two, when we're in cover one, my jack linebacker has to play man-to-man on number two, and so does my rover. So what we typically do a lot of times is I will line up in that two-high shell that you see that I use, okay? The only difference is I have an extra kid on the field, and he plays man-to-man on two backsides. So I work – the guys that are going to be playing man-to-man in my cover one are the guys that I work in man coverage when I play two-man at 7 7 the two corners, the jack, and the rope. And I just have an extra safety on the field, and they both play the hatches. That's what we do. Um, because I'm not out there trying to win 7 7 tournament trophies. What I'm doing is I'm getting my kids reps. And, you know, if you can, if you can play man-to-man when the kid's got four seconds every time, I know you can play man to man in what we do because he's rarely going to have that. So we we do run our cover three from two high and seven oh seven, but we do run a lot of two man as well. Um, and I have been called everything but my name sometimes for doing it. But you know, I tell offensive coaches you're not going to run quad right stack jet motion. You're not going to do all of that every play on Friday night either. But some of them do it. So line of receivers up where a sniffer would be and all that wonderful jazz. So you know. It's it's a copycat league, and sometimes you know you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do to defend what they're gonna do in seven on seven. But now, yeah, I have done six people before. I've done it, I've done it more in practice, just to get our kids understanding the spacing right. and knowing where you're gonna be at. Um, I don't do it as much in a tournament, but I've done it more in our drills in practice because I want the kids to realize and understand. Hey, we're defending this with six people. We're rushing five. So you have to know where your landmarks are and what your keys are and where you got to be. Yeah, I would be very tempted to do it just because what what you're doing is so simple that it seems like it goes straight to reps. It does. It's really a rep thing. I mean, the more you rep it, the faster the kid will be at it. Um, And you're teaching, if you're a DB coach or a linebacker's coach, you're teaching the kids the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Okay um now is a three deep system designed for empty no okay which is why i have two man in my bag when i go to 707s especially because you're going to see that a lot of that um and i don't want my kids out there trying to rep something that we're not going to do in a game in a game if you come out five wide i'm probably going to check man and come after you you know Mm -hmm. what i mean we don't sit back and play three deep three under to five wide we don't do that um because we know that we're down a guy we know that um, to one side of the field or the other. So I try not to do things in 707 that I'm not going to do in a game within reason. Um, but two man for us is reps because it's those same kids playing man coverage that they will be in cover one for us. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense to me. If you're so if in a real game, they, they go zero, your Jack is the one, if you're, you're checking man and coming after them, your Jack is the next one that's going to jump man to man. Yes, if we go cover one, our jack has two weak. If we okay. go cover zero, the Zach, the jack. If we go cover zero, the jack would have three strong in, in a five wide formation. Mm-hmm. Um, the mic never matches up man to man robot. Um, so if you're five wide, the jack would have typically three strong. Um, because mm-hmm. the free is going to come down and play the backside. Now, if it's a matchup thing on film, we can switch that. But typically, what we do is we'll just go zero, and what I'd probably do is bring the mic when I did it. So we're going to go zero across the board, and we're going to send six. If you go um, zero, you're gonna, you're gonna, are you going to press them, or are you going to play from cushion? Um, we do both, depending on down and distance, and depending on your alignment. We do press if your alignment is base, but if you got something funky or you're inverted, then we'll play catch man, and right. we'll sit back at about five or seven yards, or we'll play levels um, mm-hmm. and just distribute it that way. Right. Um, I had a guy ask me one time, was I playing cover four after a game? I said, nah, I ran catch man. And he swore up and down. I was playing. I said, dude, I was sending six people every other snap. Do you really think I was running quarters? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, nah. it's just, we sit back at about seven yards. And if you break off, we're going to drive on you, but we're playing it that way. So you can't do what you can't throw up the punt return ball because we're pressed. So you're just going to throw it up and let your guy run underneath of it. If I play five to seven yards off, you can't do that. Right. So, and I actually got that from a buddy of mine at Lackawanna Junior College. They run a defense very similar to mine. He's a DC there, and he had an issue. And he did this mid game. He said, "I just did it mid game, and we put a call in for it." I had a kid that got ran by twice, 
So when I called man, I just told him to back up about seven yards and he could tackle. He just, you know, had a tough time pressing. So he said next week I started doing it with all the kids, just backing them up a little bit. That way, if he breaks off in front of you, drive and tackle. But the quarterback can't just launch it the minute your receiver stacks because you're pressed up. Right. Which well, is bro, something that gotta... I find from a single high scheme is effective, too. When that quarterback sees that single safety in the middle of the field, whether it's one or three, he can't just catch the ball and just launch a punt down the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. Well, brother, Which you helps gotta... us pressure-wise. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, you about made a dang believer out of me now. We're I gotta meet with my D coordinator tomorrow. We're gonna talk about this. <laughs> uh, you did a great job, brother. Uh, talk again about your your online clinic this coming Saturday. Um, like I said, we got the clinic coming up at four o'clock. Um, Joe will have the Eventbrite link. It'll probably be in the comment line of this video, or he'll post it on his stuff. I'll be sending it to him as soon as we're done here. Um, come on Eventbrite, you shoot your email address in there. Eventbrite will let you register for free. Um, it's 50 bucks for the two hours. You'll send that to me directly. Um, you can reach out to me via social media at Anthony Bateman on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter, um, at coach T Bateman 757. You can find me there too. Um, there is a big social media group. Joe is in it. So if you ask him about it, you can come in and I advertise and promote the different packages that I put out inside of that social media group. And that, that's Hollis your Facebook, there, that's your Facebook group. It. Yes. Okay. Um, over 2,800 coaches right now. Um, Joe's one of them. He can tell you, um, I'm active in there every week, multiple times posting, letting guys know what we're doing, what we got going on. And like I said, if you see this video and it's late, I'm going to be doing another online clinic, um, in June as well. So you can you, jump onto that. Do you have, you have a YouTube channel now also? Yes. That's, um, coach. Tony B757. And I'll send you the link for that also, Joe. And then you um, said you'll see TikTok. some film cutups on the YouTube channel. Okay. Um, you'll see more than what I showed you tonight. Now I ain't gonna lie to y'all, you're gonna see last year because I haven't uploaded fresh stuff yet. So the stuff you saw on this tonight, you're not gonna see on YouTube because I haven't put it up there yet. Can you send me the uh TikTok uh link also? Yes, I'll send you all of that. I'll make sure I'll put, Joe has I'll all post that. it all on there so they can get to you because I know you're you're getting pretty active on social media and you your stuff. Man, is it, good, it, it, it makes me do it. It's Joe's fault. This daggone air raid channel. All these guys come up here. It's Joe's fault. You know all, <laughs> that air raid stuff is like his own little world. Well, you got some pretty good answers for it. So uh, keep doing what I you mean. Doing, look, man. I'll tell you the, the the offense, the passing offense I probably respect the most is the air raid because it is designed to get the ball out of your hand quickly. Um, and if you're going up against me, that's what you have to do. Um, I like in the air raid, you know, the, the kryptonite to Buddy Ryan was Dan Marino, the man that probably had the fastest release in NFL history. So I like in the air raid like that. If you got a trigger man that can get the ball out of his hand quick and knows where he wants to go with it, it does eliminate and, and slow down some of the pressure because the pressure can't get there. Um, and that's just what it boils down to. Um, so to me, the air raid guys, to me, I'm always looking at, you know, if I can't blitz them, if I can just sit there and rush five and play zone behind it, I got to be able to do that because their system is designed that my pressure can't get there. And I know that. Um, so because of that, I have to have a way to play coverage to y'all. Um, I can't just sit there and just come after you all night. So. Even though I like to, um, and some quarter high school quarterbacks panic, but if you get a kid that knows what he's doing, he, he don't panic. He's going to sit in there and throw it, and I got to be able to play coverage of that and not just blitz it off. So, well, I, I like I like what you're doing. Uh, I like I always like a defense with a strong philosophy. Like this is who we are. This is what we do, and here's how we here's how we play. What you're doing. You know, and then there's no no bull crapping around how we're gonna we're gonna change stuff. This is who we are, this is what we're gonna do, and that's what that's what your your uh, system looks like. Very much so. We we have an attack philosophy, we have a dictate to you philosophy. Um don't get me wrong, it's not foolproof. Um at the end of the day in high school football, as you guys know, the guy with the best Jimmies and Joes is probably gonna win. And that's just what it boils down to. Um but the the philosophy of it, the simplicity coaching wise and scheme wise, um, people people know they're playing us because they know going in, okay, this is what we're gonna get. We're gonna get a heavy bear front, we're gonna get a five-man pass rush a lot, we're occasionally gonna get six, 
Um, I'm actually going to have some stuff this year, Joe, where I send seven. Um, didn't do that last year. Um, I haven't done it since I coached in Tidewater when I had a lot of speed. But we're going to try it this year, um, some seven-man pressure stuff, um, and not from cover zero, um, from what you're seeing right here. Um, and basically play that three deep and add that seventh guy and basically have a poach player to the field. And if I know I'm bringing more than you can block, then that ball's got to come out hot. It's got to come out now. Um, so we're going to add that to the repertoire this year. So, and you'll be surprised how many turnovers you can generate from. Um, we had, shoot, I want to say we had 19 turnovers this year. Um, a little, I think 13 of those were interceptions. I think might've been a dozen, but we had our goal this year is uh, we want a flat 20. Um, I think we had 19 last year. So you're averaging two turnovers a game. Most OCs will take that. Um, they love that extra possession. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, and you, and you get them from, honestly, you get them from the pressure as much as more than you do the coverage, to be honest with you. It's not, it's not cover three, as you know, is not a, a shutdown, lockdown, you know, it's a, it's a good defense, but it's not, you know, foolproof. But when you add pressure to it and now the ball has to come out before they wanted it to or the decision is rushed, now you you add them two things together and you have a blend for a turnover. Um, we had two games this year where we caught three interceptions. Um, we had two different games where we had three picks in those games. Um, so – it's just a credit to pressure the quarterback. Good things happen. Um, now, even I've if you don't get the sack. Of the five man pressure. Yeah, and, and especially in high school when you may not have four dominant kids or, or four kids that can get there. Mm -hmm. um, at least by sending five, I'm guaranteeing my kids going to have a one on one chance, most likely. Mm -hmm. You know, if if he don't win that battle, okay, but at least it's just going to be you and that guy. It's three tech in the guard. It's the nose in the center. However you want to draw it up. You know your mono and mono with that guy. Um, and then if I mix in the sixth man, I can play with where that sixth man is coming from because the only answer you got for him is your back, unless you're going to keep tight ends in and stuff like that. And when you start doing that, now you're giving me the advantage. We want a numbers advantage in one or two places, either in the box or the back end. If we get it in the box, that means you can't run the ball and we're getting pressure on your quarterback. When you start matching our numbers in the box, now you're sending out three guys, but we got five or six in coverage. So we still have the numbers advantage. And that's the basis of the system is a plus one or better numbers advantage one way or the other. It is literally that simple. I like it, brother. I like it. Man, I appreciate you coming on and doing this. No problem, man. And I promise you it won't be um, like two and a half years before I do it again. <laughs> I don't think your uh, subscribers will like that too much. <laughs> no, 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 you're you're one of their favorites. All right, brother. I see that. Care. All right. I see that.